So we started out on the packet, page 459. Um, were there any questions there you need me to go over? Okay, so you're looking at number eight here. This is page 459 of the packet. Input resistance in an amplifier is 1.2 kilo ohms. Output resistance, so this is R in, R out is 200 ohms. If the amplifier is a plus 68.45 dB gain, And we want to need a 28-volt output. So what this is saying is our power out, our power is voltage squared divided by resistance. So the power out here is going to be, we need 28 squared over 200. So it's going to give us a 3.92 watts is what we need coming out of that. Remember our formula is the gain in decibels is 10 times the log of our output power over our input power. We know the gain in decibels, 68.45. We know the required output power here is 3.92 watts. We know we're looking for the required input power at this point. Why are we using this one, which is 10 log, and converting these to watts instead of using the voltage one? In other words, we had that 20 times the log, and we could use the input and output voltages. Why do we have to use the, the power one instead of the voltage? What was the big assumption on the voltage one? It allowed us to use the voltage. The big assumption in order to use voltage is that the input resistance and the output resistance are approximately the same. These are very different. We got six times the input resistance, we do the output resistance. So we have to convert them to power, so we have to use the power. In this case, since they're known values, it's not such a big deal. We don't have to test anything anyway. So now to solve this equation here, we can divide by 10. So we got 6.845 equals log of 3.92 over power in. Then what? Have to get rid of the log. What's the opposite of a log? 10 to the power of. Now it's a log base 10. We use the log to get rid of, if we had 10 to the power of x, we use the log to get rid of the 10. Well, if we've got log, we use 10 to the power of to get rid of it. So here that 10 cancels that out. We have 3.92 over our input power here. On this side, second log, which gives us that 10 to the power of, 6.845 equals... 6,998,420 or so. We'll go 419.96. Now to solve for P, the power in, we've got to do that. So it's going to be 1 times the 3.92 
divided by the 6 million whatever which gives us now that's scientific notation so that's six zeros and then five six so the input power has to be a minimum of what is that 560 nanowatts So given that we have a resistance, input resistance of 1.2 kilo ohms, that's our power, has to equal voltage squared over 1200, that's for the 1 1.2. So now we're going to multiply by 1200. So this times 1,200. So 0 0.00, 0 0.0672 equals voltage squared. Now we got to square root that. So second square root, second answer. So 0 0.02. Yeah, we go 0 0.026. Is there voltage? So in other words, we need 26 millivolts. Is what we need for an input voltage. Does that make sense? If you think about it, sure. 65 decibel gain is huge. Remember, 3 decibels is doubling. Well, 65 decibels has done that pretty much 22 times. So that's a million times, more than a million times the power. See what you need? Okay. Do you guys I, understand? I got a question. Can you go back up a little? Sure. Where did you get the, the next step? Up uh, here. Down just a little bit. Right there. How did you, where did you go from the middle there? How did you get to that? Okay, this is a proportion. So I did cross multiply and divide. When the variable's on the bottom of the fraction, that's usually the easiest way to solve for it is to turn it into a proportion and cross multiply and divide. Any other questions? Let's have you guys try another one like that. See how you do on it. So let's say our input resistance is 2 kilo ohms. This time I'm going to give you the input voltage. The input voltage is 0.5 volts. The output resistance. Is 150 ohms. We're looking for the output voltage. And we know with the amplifier has a 24 dB gain to it. Find that output voltage. This one should be slightly easier than the last one. To make sure you're going in the right direction. Our power in is going to be 0.5 volts squared over 2,000 ohms. So that is 0.000125 watts. That's your input power. So you're going to set this up. You're going to have a gain of 24. There's 10. There's a log of. That's on the bottom. So you're going to get your output power on top. Anybody get the output power? 
final through one. Anybody else see anything different? You guys need another minute to get that far? Yeah? Okay, I'll give you another minute. Okay, so the first thing we got to do is divide by 10. You got to isolate the log. So we're going to get 2.4 equals the log of P out over 125 microwatts, but we're going to put it into watts, so 0 0.000125. Now, once the log is by itself, that's where you get rid of the log by doing 10 to the power of. So that cancels out. That's just going to leave us with P out over 0 0.000125 over here. 10 to the power of 2.4. Now, I actually typed in 10 to the power of 2.4. You could have done second log. 2.4 would have done the same thing. So 251.19. And now to solve for the P out here, what do we have to do? We have to multiply by the point zero 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 one two five. So times point one two three one two five. So point zero three one four. watts that is my power out so now that I have my power out I can find my voltage 0 0.0314 watts has to equal my voltage squared over my output resistance of 150 ohms so to solve this we'll start out by doing what well we could cross multiply and get the V squared. I'm just going to multiply by 150. So V squared 4.710 basically is the voltage squared. So now we can square root that. Two point one seven volts is what we get out. Is our output voltage? Anybody get all the way on that one? Is that close? I got to the lot. Okay. Well, let's simplify this. Let's step back a step. Let's say that we are giving you now let's make it easy. Let's start out the easiest way. Let's say the input power is. Twenty five milliwatts. The output power is three hundred milliwatts. Find the DB gain. So this is stepping way back a bit. Inside my log, what goes on top? 300 milliwatts. And on bottom? 25 milliwatts. All I need these units for is to make sure they're the same. And then once I know they're the same, I'm going to cross them off. So now I'm just going to type in 10 times log 300 divided by 25. Close my parentheses. 10.79 dB is my gain. Now remember, 3 dB is doubling the power. So you went here from 25 to 300. 3 would be double. 6 would be 4 times because you double it again. 9 would be 8 times because you're doubling it again. Double of 4 is 8. So here it went up 12 times, that's only a 10 dB gain. The 10 dBs doesn't seem like a huge gain, but 
It's 12 times the power. So, what if we change that to the divided? Because, like, when I, when I wrote everything down, I mm -hmm. like converted it. As long as these two units are the same is all that matters. Okay. So, you could have that in watts, you could have it in milliwatts, you could have it in microwatts. As long as those two units are the same. Let's say I tell you that the input power is 80 milliwatts and the gain is plus 15 dBs. Find the output power. This time we know the gain is 15. So that goes in there. Equals 10 times the log of, we're looking for P out. We have P in is 80 milliwatts. So again, all this milliwatts tells us is that our output power is going to be in milliwatts as well. What do we do to solve this? Divide by 10. So 1.5 equals log P out over 80. What's our next step? Yeah. 10 to the power of. So we've got P out here over 80. 10 to the power of 1.5. 31.623. Then what? Solve for P out, we gotta get rid of the 80. P out is divided by 80, so we're gonna multiply by 80. So 25, 29.8. Now that is in milliwatts, so we're going to convert that to 2.53 watts. So that output power would have to be 2.53 watts. Does that make sense? So let's have you guys try one. The input power. 200 milliwatts, the amplifier gain is 8 dB, find the power out, let's see what you come up with. Should turn out the same though. Let's take a peek. We divide by 10 here, so we get 0.8 equals the log of our output power over 200 milliwatts. So that's 10 to the power of the 0.8, that's 6.31 basically. So 10 to the power of cancels out the log. Here I've got P out over the 200 milliwatts. If you did 0.2, it's just going to be dealing with watts instead of milliwatts. So now I'm going to multiply by 200. 1261.9. Of course, that is milliwatts. So that would be 1.26 watts. What's that? Okay, how did it round off to get it way off? Or? No, I'm just saying it's not like it's not like it's two number one. Oh, yeah, that's fine.
Was yours consistent with that length? Or? Yeah, I see what I did. I, okay. I hit the, uh, the, the lines and then took a little out too. Gotcha. Those. So you had E to the X instead of 10 to the X. Yeah. Okay. So let's say that our output power is 3 watts. Our gain is 12 dB. Find the PN this time. Let's take a peek. So we've got 12 dB equals 10 times the log of 3 watts over your power in. Divide by 10, we got 1.2 equals log of 3 over Pn. 10 to the power of cancels out the log. 10 to the power of 1.2, 15.85. And now here to solve for Pn, since it's on bottom, I'm going to do this. Make it a proportion. So it's 1 times 3 divided by the 15.85. Point one eight nine. Well, if the variable is on the if the number's on the bottom or the variable that we're looking for is on bottom, then you have to do a cross multiply and divide. This is just a proportion, is all. So if I'm solving for this piece of the proportion, I cross multiply and divide. For homework? Um, actually, you probably won't get quite that far. What we're going to do is go back in that old packet, the one that had the inductors and um, capacitors in it, and page 491 on the back of that old packet. That's why the homework didn't match up yesterday. So we're going to go back and we're going to catch that page. And then we're going to just probably keep working on this page for now. I don't think we're going to get to the DBMVs. Take a look at it if it makes sense. I mean, we'll talk about it more tomorrow. We might get some of it done today. We won't have our test till Monday or Tuesday. Which packet? Yeah. The old packet is uh, the capacitors and inductors. Let me see the front of that one. Yep, that's the one. So page 491 in the back of that one. Okay. So you can see going backwards with these can be kind of difficult just because of the round off and all that. Um, for that one, I knew that 12 dBs, every 3 dBs is doubling, right? Put my dBs in there. So 3 dBs is doubling. So at 3 dB, it's doubled, so it's times 2. At 6 dBs, it's doubled again, so 2 times 2 is 4, it's 4 times. At 9 dBs, it's gone up another 3 dBs, well, doubling 4. Now it's 8 times what it originally was. At 12 dBs, yeah, double that, it's now 16 times. So we had that input of 3 watts. Three divided by sixteen gives us point one eight seven five. We got point one eight nine because this is just an approximation. Technically, it's point. It's three point oh one dBs is doubling. So if I had twelve point oh four dBs, it would have been almost exactly that. But three dBs is close enough. So we know that twelve dBs. It's gone up. It's sixteen times what it started.
this number, by the way, this can be found. If I take my dBs divided by 3, so I took 12 divided by 3 is 4. That number is 2 to the 4th power. So let's say I've got 21 dBs. 21 divided by 3 is 7, right? 2 to the power of 7. 128 times where it started, right? 128 is right, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, the power should be approximately 100. It's going to be slightly less than that because, again, it's 3.01 and not just 3. So 21.07, it would be 128 times. So let's just try that once. Let's say we have a, a power input. Let's just keep it simple. We'll go 5 watts. And again, of 30 dBs. Let's estimate the power out using what I just did up here. And then we'll actually calculate it. So I'm going to give you a minute to, or a few seconds to estimate that. Then we're going to actually calculate it. So go ahead and. Yep, so you divide by 3, you got 10. So it's doubled 10 times. So 2 to the power of 10 is 1,024. That's 1,024 times where it started. So times 5. So 5,120 watts. That's our estimate. So let's actually calculate it out. 30 dBs equals 10 times the log of P out over 5. Divide by 10. 3 equals the log of P out over 5. We do 10 to the power of, well, 10 to the power of 3 is 1,000 equals P out over 5. And we multiply by 5, by 5, you're to the 5. Power out is 5,000. Yep, so that gave me 3. Oh, you, you did 10 divided by 30. Or, well, or I, missed a zero somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So I'm 5,000 is what we get for the power out. 5,120 is a pretty good estimate. For, I mean, for a quick estimate. We mentioned briefly yesterday an absolute scale. And what we're looking at here so far is just comparing from one voltage to the next or one, one uh, power level to the next, a gain or a loss. We're not actually measuring an absolute level. So what we have for measuring an absolute level is a decibel milliwatt. And what a decibel milliwatt was, is what we said it was, was it's 10 times the log of whatever our power level is compared to 1 milliwatt. So that's going to give us our number, our level in dBms. So dBm stands for decibel milliwatt. So if I want to measure, if I take a reading and I get a, well, let's start out simple, an output power of 40 milliwatts, my absolute power level here, Forty milliwatts over one milliwatt. Notice that since this 
denominator is mil one milliwatt, my numerator has to be converted into milliwatts. So that's just going to be 10 times the log of 40 divided by 1. I don't even have to put in divided by 1. Just 10 times the log of 40. So that's 16.02 dBms. Now, as we mentioned yesterday, um, when you go to measure power, you either have to have both the voltage and the current, or you have to have the voltage and the resistance. Well, the voltage can be measured without interrupting the circuit. But to measure either current or resistance, you have to unhook the circuit, take, remove power from the circuit. And for, for, for resistance, you have to remove power from the circuit and measure it with no power going through it. For current, you have to interrupt the circuit and stick the meter in the circuit to measure the current. Either way, you have to interrupt service if you're looking at testing a, a signal on any sort of communications line. So in order to avoid having to interrupt that service, we just go off of the voltage. Like we did, you, know, you could have the voltage gain was used. Remember, for the voltage gain, we had to assume input resistance and output resistance were approximately the same. For this, we just use a, a voltage measurement, and we're going to use something called a decibel millivolt instead of a milliwatt. And for a decibel millivolt, remember we said that the millivolt, the volt squared divided by resistance equals the power. So that squared is what caused it to be a 20 instead of a 10 in our log. So the number of dBMVs, that's a decibel millivolt, is 20 times the log of that voltage divided by one millivolt. So let's say we take a measurement and our voltage is 125 millivolts. So our power level here, 20 times the log of 125 millivolts over one millivolt Again, the only purpose of putting millivolts on there is to make sure those units cancel out. So this will simply be 20 times the log of 125. So 41.94. So that's 41.94 dBmD. For right now, I think we've covered enough. Um, tomorrow, we'll go over you know, the doublings and stuff like that with these. For right now, like I said earlier, I want you to go back in that old packet, page 491, I believe. Yep, 491. It's like 1 through 61, the odds. There's a bunch of, you know, calculate the dBs, the dBMs, you know, the power gain or power loss based on wattage or voltage or volts and resistance or volts and currents and whatever and then we have what we just did on the on the new packet so this is the old packet and the new packet from yesterday page 459 1 through 10 is what we did yesterday 8 9 and 10 involve doing that calculation backwards so go back and make sure you have done those two actually 7 8 9 and 10 Just go back and make sure you have done all 10 of those because I know there were a few in there that were very tricky. But make sure you do at least those last three, 8, 9, and 10, so you have done that calculation backwards, having to solve that formula backwards. Okay, with that, we'll let you guys have the last eight minutes to get started on your homework.